Welcome again, Saints, uh, who are uh, Liberating Faith Study Students AME. Jesus Cooks Breakfast. Today is Lesson 7, April 16, 2023. Jesus Cooks Breakfast, of course. The Lesson Scriptures, John 21, 1 through 14, and the Focus Scriptures, John 21, 1 through 14. And the key verse, Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. Now one of his disciples dared to ask him, who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. And saints today, when we talk about this, we're just, I just got 10 minutes with this one. This is kind of a super short lesson today. Uh, but when we talk about this, you're going to find out uh, something. I think a few, uh, a few things that I think are, are really a blessing. The first is for you, Jesus, Jesus had phys uh, spiritually fed his disciples. He washed their feet and serving them. And this was an instance where he actually physically fed them in encouragement uh, to continue on in the mission that he had given them. Because if you remember a little earlier, they were discouraged. They were hiding. You know, they were hiding away. The women went to the tomb. Tomb was up. They didn't believe it. Jesus, before that, was arrested. They ran off. All this chaos was going on uh, around the days of his arrest, uh, execution, and then his resurrection. But he reappears to them to encourage them on a little bit further. And uh, something I just want to begin with today, just have a few minutes with you, is to say this, is that um, the Lord, through the Holy Spirit, will show up to encourage you once again, no matter how many times that you fall down. And I want you all to understand that as long as there's grace, uh, as long as grace is available, you got by the blood, as they say, one's warm in your veins, he will show up to encourage you, even though you might have disappointed him before, because I know I have. There's a reason why Paul said we need to die daily. The Bible also talks about if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And the Bible also says, for them that says they have no sin, they're a liar and the truth is not in, uh, the truth is not in them. So Jesus is, is, has been spiritually feeding feeding them. We know about the Last Supper where uh, he taught them uh, about the, the you know the physical uh, the physical part of the breaking of bread and the sharing of wine as well as the communion or do this in remembrance of him. So all along the way, in one way or another, Jesus was feeding people. He fed the five thousand. He fed his disciples on and on and on and on. But then you real did you realize that? Uh, Jesus both physically and spiritually fed people almost in the same moment. <laughs> and that's how the Lord got down. In John 21, I'm just read a few verses. And these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias. And he showed himself in this way, gathered there were together with Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana, Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. He said, we will go with you. They went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just after daybreak, Jesus stood on the beach, but the disciples did not know it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, children, you uh, you have no fish, have you? They answered, no. He said to them, cast the net to the right side of the boat and you will find some. So they did so. And they were so their fish were so numerous in the net that time, uh, they were not able to haul it in. Uh, then the disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. When Peter heard uh, that it was the Lord, he put on some clothes for he was naked and jumped into the sea. But the other disciples came in the boat dragging uh, and were not far behind. And what we find something beautiful about Peter here, uh, saints of God, is uh, Peter Peter was like a really impulsive disciple. And we saw that, we saw that movie. Uh, many of us saw a movie called Forrest Gump. I just love that movie. It was so cool that a person with such a disability could do such great things and fiction, you know. But I, I really, really like that movie. But I, I said that to uh, point out, saints, that uh, we have to understand that God used Peter, although Peter was impulsive and Peter would jump out. Uh, he would just jump out. And one of those things, uh, if I could just list right off the top of my spirit here, uh, some of Peter's impulsive actions. Remember, who was the one, the disciple who stepped out of the boat uh, onto the water, although he starts sinking while all the others stayed in the boat? It was Peter. Who's the guy here to jump out the boat and swim in while the rest stayed in, stayed dry and made it a little bit later? It was Peter. Who is the one jumped out, caused himself defending the Lord and, and cut off somebody's ear? It was Peter. Who was the same one who called himself trying to protect Jesus? I said, oh, Lord, you know, I, we we're going to die with you. It was Peter. Who was the uh, same one as well of that very same Peter, though, through his impulsiveness? Jesus said, who do you say that I am? Jesus, uh, uh, Peter spoke up, said, thou Christ, the son of the living God. 
And Jesus said, on the uh, flesh and blood haven't revealed this to you, uh, Simon Barjona. But I said that to point out is that uh, it was Peter, uh, the one who, used, who just jumped out there trying to get to Jesus. So with the spiritual and the physical feeding of all the great things the Lord has done for you, you ought to be intense in trying to get to him like Peter. And just like Peter as well, you will make mistakes oftentimes uh, when we talk about uh, sitting down or dining and communing with the Lord and then he's sending us out to encourage us. But I want you all to understand that those mistakes are forgiven and can be forgiven today. So saints of God, uh, as I push forward here, you just realize the second thing I want you to realize is that oftentimes when we when we look at this, they, they've been fishing all night, didn't catch nothing. And Jesus said, cast your, your net out there again. And they didn't even know it was the Lord when he was standing on the boat there at that time. But then when they hauled it in and it seems then they realized it was Jesus. But I want to tell you, I know some of you have been fishing in the spirit or on the battlefield, as we say, a long time. And oftentimes it seems like we're fishing for the Lord and coming up with empty nets. We're praying to the Lord, but our nets are still empty for, to provide. But I want to say at the very moment um, that your trust seems to be diminished, God will call you back. Uh, one more time and, and say, I need you to do that again, just this time again. And when you cast your net, you're going to see that the Lord is able. But I also want to speak for you to you right now that says, Dale, I've been doing that for some time now and nothing seems to come of it. I want to tell you to keep casting your net out there uh, because those that labor for the Lord do not labor. What? In vain. His word will not return unto him void. Now, we talked before about what that really means. That does not mean uh, I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a share the Lord with people because er, uh, the, er, uh, his word ain't returned to him void. Well, what that, that doesn't mean that everybody's going to be saved. That's not what that means because people believe uh, subconsciously that when we talk about his word will not return it to him void, that that means everybody hears the word is going to be saved. That's not the truth. And we know people did Jesus preach to people uh, that, that were lost. They died. What the hell? We know that Jesus told some people, you're going to die in your sin because you don't believe I am who I say I am. So when we talk about his word won't return to a void, yes, some are going to come in and they're going to hear the word. Wide is the gate that leads to destruction, narrows a path that leads to life, and only a few are going to go in. A few are going to hear that word and accept that the wide gate is for most people's going to hear it and it's uh, not going to uh, make a difference with them. But what it is, is when God says it will not return it to him void, saints, we have to understand that doctrinally to mean that either God is going to have something to, to say, okay, you believe my word, your name is in the book of life, well done, thy good and faithful servant, enter to a joy of the Lord. Or those ones who are not in the book of life and they heard the word, they're going to have to hear the word. He's going to say, depart from you that work in iniquity and the hellfire for the devil and his angels. So it means void means God's going to have a record, right? Uh, he's going to have a record on whether they accepted or didn't. So that's what that means, saints, because I know we've been soldiering on with some misconceptions about that. The introduction of scripture lesson centers around Jesus' appearance to the seven disciples along the Sea of Tiberias. I like the story of the two disciples traveling on the road to Emmaus. Uh, you found the gospel of Luke. Several of these disciples are named, yet the two stories have similar themes of Jesus' expected appearance after his resurrection and a failure initially. They recognized him. This account compels the reader to recognize how easy followers of Christ become despondent and return uh, to their prior life. And again, if he, if he goes uh, long stretches, uh, saints without, we think, showing up and showing out or, or answering our prayers, uh, Sunday, AME Sunday School students, we, we want to then believe that somehow the Lord isn't even hearing us or he's not doing what he said he should do. Neither is the case. He is hearing you. And he'll do what he says he can do. The, the issue becomes, as they say, they become lethargic in that. The issue becomes he's not doing what we think he should do. And remember, Jesus did say, ask anything in my name or the name of Jesus, and it will be given to you, right? But the, the, the reality is most of what we ask isn't in his name, so it's not going to be fulfilled. Because any prayer has to be according to his will. If it's in Jesus' name, thereby, by proxy, it has to be according to God's will or it's not going to be answered. But you really want to know? Uh, hit me Sunday school when uh, prayers are really answered. Prayers are really answered when your prayer meets the Lord's will for your life.
That's when prayers are answered and blessings flow is when your prayer meets God's will for your life. So as I close today, uh, saints in the life application, just a short lesson today. The story of disciples meeting Jesus after his resurrection is an uplifting testimony of victory and hope. Like the disciples, we face tragedies and disappointments. Life can become frustrating and confusing. Disciples also experience these challenges, but their calling would still become clear. They were selected and chosen by Jesus to share the gospel to the world. Therefore, every believer is also reminded life will have difficulties and even failures. However, the Lord is still guiding us. Saints, this is not an easy journey. Nothing is easy about this as I close, but we have to just keep taking that next step because there are situations that are going to be extraordinarily difficult, like the disciples found out uh, after Jesus' death, where it's going to seem like God is silent, but he is not silent. He's doing a work. The issue becomes we can't really see what he is doing because we want to put it according to our own parameters, even though we say his thoughts are not our thoughts, neither are his ways our ways, declares the Lord. So if you really mean that today, please understand the huge, three huge ideas here, saints, as I close here, is that first, um, you have to soldier on and believe God, even when your nets seem to keep coming back empty. You have to keep soldiering on and, and, and pressing to that place where the Lord is saying, I need you to keep cast, cast it out there one more time. And he casts it out there and all of a sudden his word is reaffirmed in our life. The second thing that I want us to take away from this Jesus standing on the shore and then he, he cooked breakfast for his disciples is Jesus, the, the Holy Spirit anyway will spiritually feed us and uh, it will also guide us to a place where we can physically eat and give us the wisdom, obviously, to be able to produce food for our own tables as well. So we have to realize that the Lord is not slack, saints, concerning our promise. And finally, saints, please realize that God's thoughts are not our thoughts, neither are his ways our ways. If you're sick, if you're distrustful, uh, if you feel like you're in a dry season, Today, I want you in the name of Jesus, Yeshua HaMashiach, to keep casting your net out there when it seems like you're dragging nothing in. Just keep on warring for the Lord because those who endure to the end, they shall receive the crown of life. And if we suffer with him, we shall also reign with him. Suffering oftentimes is intensely personal and not done at the hands of others. It's done uh, at the hands of, of within us, that spiritual warfare that goes on. We'll see you next week. So be it. Welcome again, saints. It is your dearest servant, brother, Pastor Brian Dale. I am asking you right now to go to the description section of this video and click the link for sermondownload.net. We want you to take the next step. We buy, you buy devotionals, you buy Bible studies, you buy books uh, from religious leaders, all of these things. We want you to go straight to the source, into the mind of God which are pastoral sermon notes. That's where these things originate at. So you can see straight into the process and how God deals with us as we deliver our word. These are good for Sunday morning preaching. All you can do is just print and preach. They're ready to go. You can pull them up on any device, smartphone, all the way up to your tablet devices. You can also use them as Bible study content as well. Further, if you lean into that a bit further, we have a 104 sermon package where you can download 104 sermons and saints you could turn this into books devotionals our notes are thorough they're doctrinal they're theological we want you to go to sermondownload.net by clicking in the link the description section of this video so be it